Hey folks, how are you doing? Tim here, People Director at Tech on Toast. We are the dedicated recruitment and people partner for the hospitality tech industry. Why are we here and doing this today? If you didn't uh, tune in last month, uh, we had a great conversation with Zal, Chief Commercial Officer at uh, Slurp. And we have decided that we want to sort of shine a little bit of a spotlight on some of the wonderful people and what they're doing um, from a leadership and people perspective within the hospitality tech community. Delighted this month to be joined by Georgia, who is head of talent at Beta Mojo, uh, a sure business that a lot of you are familiar with. Georgia, good to see you again. How are you? really well tim thank you so much for the lovely intro i, I really appreciate that um so yes i've been head of talent here at visa mojo for basically the best part of two and a half years and seen a huge amount of growth during that period but uh i guess to give you a bit of background on us so at visa mojo we're the tech partner behind leading restaurant brands across europe um you know originally sort of we restaurant fairs ourselves and we basically leverage our, our sort of real world experience to them with sort of cutting edge technology um, and our all-in-one sort of ecosystem platform really caters to the kind of omnichannel needs of, of modern eateries. And it offers really everything from sort of POS, kiosks to digital ordering and loyalty programs. And we combine our, our comprehensive tech with our team's expertise to boost revenue, enhance efficiency and, and streamline operations, ultimately to, to help our customers thrive and scale. Amazing. I'll have to have a chat with Nick, VP Commercial. That was a pretty slick pitch. I hope you're doing training with all the sales team. <laughs> Listen, um, but today's about you, right? And um, uh, Vita Mojo is an awesome business. We love what you guys are doing and, and really love collaborating with you. And we've done some pretty cool stuff in the past and, and hopefully some more stuff in the future. Um, but like I said, today's about you and, and keen to sort of ask some questions and excited to hear your answers. Obviously, head of talent at Vita Mojo now and, and quite the journey over the last two and a half years. Let's go back to the beginning when your career journey started. Keen to know what your first job was that got everything sort of launched for you. Uh, I think what has been a big supporting factor from my perspective is my first job was actually in hospitality, working at a local pub um, in Islington in the back of house kitchen. Um, and that's where I got my kind of taste of, of the domain, the sector, and really developed a huge appreciation for those in the field. And I guess that experience has really helped me understand the drivers behind people's interests in, in hospitality, which also I think really aligns, you know, with our mission at Beta Mojo and how we're looking to support those that work in the industry as well. So yeah, it gave me some really good backing and experience to kind of understand people better. Absolutely. It's uh, it's it's by no means an essential or a deal breaker, but I think pretty sort of widely agreed in the industry, isn't it? That if you've got that prior experience before moving into it, it's a, it's a unique and wonderful world that we sort of live and operate in from a hospitality perspective. So having that prior experience is, um, is a brilliant sort of starting point and gives you a the perspective you need, I think. Um, if we could um, sort of go back in time now with, with the career journey that you've had since, keen to find out a little bit more about, what advice would you give to yourself just starting out now with all of the learnings and wisdom that you've picked up over, over the last few years? I really love this question. Um, I guess the biggest one I would say is take more risks. Um, you know, after graduating my first role, which was in uh, working in a recruitment agency, it really provided a, a solid foundation in understanding talent and people. Um, however, you know, this was during a recession. And I think I became nervous about leaving and I, I very naturally settled into to complacency. Um, and I, I think the biggest thing I would say is, you know, embrace opportunities to challenge yourself and, and step out of your comfort zone. Um, you know, growth often comes from taking risks and, and sort of pursuing new experiences. Yeah, great piece of advice. I think a great piece of advice for your former self and for anybody, really. What would you consider to be the biggest challenge in your job current day at Vita Mojo in, in a leadership position now? I think the biggest challenge for any business is, is really retaining exceptional talent. You know, my role goes beyond evaluating sort of external candidates. It's also about fostering internal growth and development. Um, and in a startup or scale up environment, the path forward isn't always like clearly defined, um, as it also really depends on sort of general business growth as well. Um, therefore, it, it's crucial to ensure that our team members at Beta Mojo are focused on more than just titles. You know, we need to prioritize their skill development, knowledge acquisition, relationship building, which really will benefit them both within our organization, but also we want to see that it can support them beyond their time with us. You know, I think 
people that are we call mo our team members mojis here but successful moji members um are, are those that really proactively seek growth opportunities you know that can contribute meaningfully and, and really embrace sort of non-linear career progression as well yeah we, we've, it's something we've been discussing loads as you know we, we've got a marketplace with with over 100 tech partners and there's um for me one of the most sort of fascinating subsectors is around people management and people engagement and and what you can do from a technology perspective alongside that of the initiatives of the, of the people team internally to really create that environment that's engaging and rewarding and, and development fueled uh, fascinating subject that I, I could talk about all day with regards to the sort of the future of the hospitality sector what sort of gets you the most excited Oh, that's a big question. I guess what truly excites me about hospitality is, is the kind of transformative, transformative potential of technology. Um, you know, with innovations like Advita Mojo, we have the power to really kind of revitalize this industry, you know, driving it toward a hopefully a very thriving future by leveraging sort of cutting edge tech. We can kind of rejuvenate the hospitality sector, boost economies, create dynamic job opportunities and really just enhance the overall sort of dining experience. And it's really, for me anyway, it's really exhilarating to think about the positive impact we can make in reshaping and, and elevating the way that people sort of experience dining as a whole by technology. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What single thing would make your job easier, Georgia, leading a sort of a people and talent function in a, in a fast paced growing business? Really intrigued to hear your response to this. I guess that uh, could, um, I would say if I could offer a role to every remarkable talent I encounter, I would. Um, I think the often the, the hardest part of my job, it, and it can be very disheartening, is, is knowing how much energy and dedication and effort goes into the interview process and only to realise that not everyone can be selected. So, yeah, that would probably be my response. If I could give everyone a, a role, that would be, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an easy one to say, but I wish I could, definitely. Yeah, it, it's tough, isn't it? It's it's um, recruitment, whether you're sort of outside, you know, an agency recruiter like me um, from the outside sort of supporting or internally like yourself, you get you build great connections with people, don't you? And and um, I think that the rewards when when you get something right and you can provide such a great opportunity and that fit there is is amazing. So you're heading up the talent function now, Georgia, and obviously sort of an extensive career, which I wish we had the time or, or I, you know, we could talk in more detail about. But as a leader now and obviously working with a variety of different leaders over your career, what sort of top three characteristics or traits do you think help define or or shape great leadership? Um, look, uh, uh, to me, that's an incredibly important question because that's also how we retain brilliant people in role as well. I think there are three key sort of trait skills that I feel are the most important being, I guess the first one being sort of honesty and transparency. I think, you know, effective leaders foster trust and credibility by consistently being honest and transparent and ensuring, you know, their teams are well informed, that, that they're aligned with the kind of organizational goals and challenges as well. Um, I guess my second one, one would be like, it's so important to be kind and compassionate, um, ultimately be human centric. And I think by demonstrating sort of these elements, you know, leaders create a very supportive and very inclusive environment where team members feel valued, understood and motivated to kind of basically contribute their best every day. Um, and then last but not least, I would say probably accountability. You know, I think strong leaders take responsibility for their actions and decisions, but also they hold themselves and their teams accountable, um, you know, which drives a culture of ownership and integrity and kind of this element of sort of continuous improvement. Um, and I think that aligns very heavily with one of my favorite values here, which is making new mistakes. You know, we learn via our mistakes as well. Love that. I, I'm smiling because I thought um, when I spoke with Zal last month, I thought his answer, answer was brilliant. But combining your two sort of shortlist answers, I think, creates the, the perfect leader. Really great oh. answer. Um, oh. Final question, and hopefully quite a straightforward one. But I know you're uh, you're uh, sort of based down south, and I believe, and spoiled for choice for, for good restaurants. But um, what's your favourite restaurant to go to if you had to pick? Oh, well, so, so I'm based in North London, always lived around sort of the Islington area and Angel. My favourite restaurant at the moment, and this is actually easy, and it's called The Bearing, and it's on Bearing Street in Islington. And it's literally, it's one of my all-time favourites, I think. You know, I've been there countless times, and everyone I bring basically falls in love with it too. So um, I made my favourite thing on the menu, 
they do this, and I'm not really a dessert person, but they do this chocolate mousse with olive oil and sea salt and pecans. And it's just generally something I could live on forever. It's amazing. I'm sold. I'm not normally a dessert person, <laughs> but I immediately want chocolate. What's their sort of general, um, this, this is an extra question, it's included mm. in the questions. What, just a, a quick overview of their, their food offering. What sort of savory food do they do? What's the, the concept? Oh. It's, how do I say that? I think it takes so many different forms and it's very seasonal. And I love the fact that every time I go to there, the menu is different, but they do, I think they, they do an element of sort of brilliant sort of classic dishes, but with sort of quite a quirky modern twist. Um, and it's all sort of done, you know, everything's sort of farmed and, and sort of from around and sort of brought in from the UK. The food is, it's just exquisite. Um, and just the flavors, it's, yeah. I generally say go to the bearing and it's my favorite. And it's just, and it's also a really nice surrounding. I love being there with friends because, how do I say this? It, it, it's, I think it, it, it's, it's quite small, but it gives a really nice kind of warm culture where you can hear, talk, listen to people, and and the staff are just phenomenal. They're really fantastic. The chef is out of this world. Sounds ace. George, I'm really grateful for your time today. Good to catch up again. Um, thanks for doing this with us, and uh, yeah, see you soon. Seven questions. Thank you. With you. Thank you so much. Bye.